Today I'm going to be showing you how you can actually simulate the Heston model in Python. We're going to be doing this under risk neutral dynamics so then we can actually use this for option pricing. Here we're not going to be coming up with the actual parameters, but in a further video we're going to show you how you can actually calibrate the Heston model, find these parameters using real world market option prices. So the Heston model has become so popular since 1993 because of its closed form solution for European option pricing. So the Heston model is obviously very popular as a stochastic volatility model because it also takes into consideration the leverage effect and we don't have negative variances as if you use the ornstein ullenbeck process as in Stein and Stein. So this allows for a less restrictive model like the Black-Scholes model where we can actually incorporate some of the real life observations that we observe in options market. Now in the Heston model, the SDEs are actually represented by a system of SDEs. Here we have the SDEs that describe the process under real world measure P. Here you can see that the second stochastic differential equation is actually modeling the square root process of variance. So some terms to be aware of here, we've got the volatility of volatility. So this is really the volatility of this square root variance process. Here we have theta, which is the long-term price variance. We have kappa, which is the rate of reversion in terms of that long-term price variance. And here we have the Brownian motions of the asset price and the Brownian motion of the asset price variance. Now, of course, we have some kind of correlation under this real world uh, measure P between these two Brownian motions. So now we want to understand these dynamics under the risk neutral measure. So to be able to actually change measures from the real world measure P to our risk neutral measure Q, you need to use Gersonov's theorem. We won't be covering that in this video, but if you are interested in going through that process step by step, I can make a video. Just leave a comment in the section below. So the change here under the risk neutral measure, you can see now we have R for the risk free rate in this deterministic component. So now let's talk about the Heston model in terms of Monte Carlo simulations. So of course we just said that for the Heston model for European option pricing, we have a nice closed form solution. So of course you would always use this if those circumstances are true. However, there are some cases where you would like to conduct an actual Monte Carlo simulation, even under risk neutral or real world probability measures. Real world probability measures, maybe you're conducting some kind of risk metrics uh, on a certain asset, so maybe looking at VAR or CVAR, or under the risk neutral dynamics, maybe you're actually using this model, but it is not a nice European option pricing model. And what you're actually having to do is you're having to analyze something that has some complex features. So here, this is where you would use the following code. Now, the big assumption that we have to make is of course doing a Euler discretization of these SDEs. And this is where you can actually get negative variances. Now, I found a really great resource in this paper by Fabrice Douglas Rao, where he actually steps through some of the stochastic calculus and looks at the solution of the log of the stock price under these, this Hurston model. So this is what we're going to be implementing. First things first, let's import the dependency. So we need NumPy. We're going to be graphing using Seaborn for distributions and then matplotlib um, for some of our simulation plots. We're also going to be using pyvollib vectorized library. So since someone in the comments left that, of course, there's a vectorized library, we're going to be using that for a large NumPy array. And we want to be taking the implied volatility module. So let's define the parameters. So again, we've got our stock asset price, we've got time, one year, we've got the risk-free rate, the number of time steps, I've just left that uh, for 252 trading days, so one year, we're stepping through every trading day, and I've got 100,000 simulations. Now the Heston model uh, dependent parameters, we've got the rate of mean reversion of variance under the risk neutral pricing, so we've got kappa, we've got theta, which is the long-term mean of the variance. Now re remember variance is that standard deviation squared. So what you actually wanna do is take your volatility that you would associate with the market, so let's say 20%, um, and we're gonna square that to get the variance. And here we've got the current initial variance that we're starting with in the model. So if, remember theta is the long-term variance, and here we've got the initial variance. Now rho is the correlation between the returns and the variance under the risk neutral measure, 
and we've got this sigma, which is the volatility of volatility, and we've they, we've called that pretty high. That's sixty percent. So now onto the Monte Carlo simulation. So I've called this model the Heston model sim, and we're taking in all those parameters that we saw there, and you can look at the imports here again. Now for the outputs, we're going to be uh, wanting an asset price and numpy array over time, and we also want the variance uh, array. So first thing you want to do is initialize the parameters. So we've got dt equals t divided by n. We want to actually simulate a random multivariate process between the two Brownian motions. So we actually need to define two arrays um, between these two variables. We need mu and we need the covariance matrix. Now the covariance matrix is just uh, the leading diagonals of one and then we've got row that describes the relationship between these two variables and of course our expectation is zero. So we need two arrays to actually store the prices and the variances and the way we're going to do this is we're going to use numpy full. Now you need to be careful here, make sure that you don't use 100 as an integer or something like that, you want to use a float. Uh, so this whole uh, array gets indexed as a float. So be careful to not to use an integer for your fill value here. So we're just creating an array of shape um, n plus one for the time steps. So we're gonna step through 50 times, but we want to initialize one value with a start value, which is S zero. And then M is our number of simulations. And we do the same thing for our variance. So now we wanna sample the correlated Brownian motions under this risk neutral measure. To do that, you just call numpy random multivariate underscore normal. Uh, pass your mu, your covariance matrix, and then the size that you want. So again, it's going to be the same size that we have here, the time steps and our simulation numbers. Now here we don't need to go plus one because we're not accounting for the starting value. So because this is a recursive function, what we actually have to do is step through each time step. We can't just simulate it all at once. So for i in the range, uh, time starting from one all the way to n plus one, what we need to do is calculate our s using that Euler discretization before of the log uh, process of s. So what we have is the previous s. So that's gonna be our initial price times by the exponential of r minus 0.5 times the variance times by the time difference. And then we have the numpy square root of the variance process times by the square root of um, the time step times by this normal distribution. And remember, we are taking the first parameter which relates to our asset price. Then if you index by one, we're taking the Brownian motion with respect to the variance process. So for the variance, again, yes, like we said, we're taking the maximum of this variance or zero. So in a perfect world, remember, we wouldn't actually need to use this max, numpy maximum function um, between this and zero. But here, because we're doing that Euler discretization, we need to make sure that we actually take the positive variances. Now, if you are doing this just to calculate European option pricing, just a reminder, please use the closed form solution. Now here we've got the previous variance plus kappa times by the theta minus the current volatility um, times by the time difference plus the vol of vols sigma times the square root of the current variance times by the difference. And then we're multiplying this by the Brownian motion of the variance. So remember, indexing by one. So great, we've got our function for the Heston model that uh, takes the asset prices and the variance out. Now, we actually want to take a look at what happens when we go ahead and simulate this. Now here in the code, I've got uh, row positive and row negative, and we're gonna take a look at those asset distributions. So here I've got 0.98, which is a huge co positive correlation and a very negative correlation. So we've simulated this and let's just take a look at what that process actually looks like. To plot it, I can just use um, time equals numpy lin space um, from zero to t uh, with n plus one increments. I'll look at some subplots between the Heston model asset prices and the Heston model variance process. So here on the left hand side, we've got the Heston model asset prices and on the right hand side, we've got the Heston model variance process. So obviously we can actually calibrate the Heston model to get better parameters that are indicative of current market prices. And that could be used out of sample to estimate the prices of other options in the marketplace. 
Now let's take a look at the asset price distributions with different correlations. So let's compare this to the actual geometric Brownian motion process. Now we've been through this before in a previous video, I'll give the link up above. Now here I'm just taking a look at the densities of these three simulations. So here in the blue, we've got that positive correlation between asset returns and variances. And here you can see that really long tail so obviously the leverage effect identified by Black in 1976 was actually the opposite effect. This is where uh, large high increased volatility led to negative asset price returns. And you can see that here in this skew distribution with negative correlation. So we can actually capture this leverage effect in the Heston model. So that's one of the really desired properties about this model. What you'll also find from this is that we can actually capture the volatility smile. So let's take a look at the implied volatilities under different strikes. So capturing the volatility smile, here I'm just going to uh, have row of negative 0.7 and simulate that. I'm then going to use NumPy Arrange to actually get some strikes that we can calculate at using Monte Carlo approach. So I'm just going to take the discounted expectation of uh, the maximum of either a put or a call, which is just K minus S for all those different strikes and then S minus K for the calls. So I'm going to take the discounted expectation of the payoff, so the put and the calls, and we're going to use that to compute the implied volatility. So remember we're using implied volatility module from PyVol lib vectorize now, so we can throw down our NumPy arrays. So we've got K as a NumPy array and we have puts and calls as NumPy arrays. We want to return as a NumPy array. So as you can see here, the Heston model is able to capture volatility smiles. Now, calibration is very important here because you actually want to capture the implied volatility smile that's in the marketplace. So that's what we're going to be doing in the following video using market prices.